Undoubtedly, the man behind ABBA is their manager and friend, Mr. Stig Anderson. Uh, Stig, yep. um, first of all, congratulations on producing such a, 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 not only a really good group, but a very, very successful one, not only in Australia and in Sweden, but in England, America. They're topping the charts all over the place. Uh, when did you first find ABBA? Oh, it's... Uh, or it's discover a, them, really. Yeah, it's a long story. It's uh, kind of nat natural, really, because it wasn't a group from the beginning, you know. Uh, first I found Bjorn, and that was back in 64, uh, uh, I think. Uh, he was at that time a member of a folk singing group called uh, the Hoots Many Singers. And he in turn became close friends with Benny, who at that time, in the middle of the 60s, was in the Hepstyle. That's mm. right. Um, and then they, they found, so to say, the Bjorn, and as Bjorn usually say, uh, and Agneta fell in love with me, as he put it. Uh, and then uh, Bjorn and Benny wanted to uh, start recording their own songs, which they uh, wrote together. Uh, and then sometimes they needed uh, uh, the girl's help. And it was natural uh, for them to take uh, uh, Agneta or Anna and Frida in the studio. And uh, these records from the very beginning, they were called Bjorn and Benny at that time, but um, <laughs> gradually the girls became more and more important and uh, in fact we had a very big hit in, for instance, Japan uh, with, an, uh, with a song called, uh, what was it, uh, it wasn't People Need Love, uh, no it was another song anyway. But before, before the yeah. ABBA was even... That's right, and, and the, the, the record was called Bjorn and Benny in spite of that the girls really were, the, were, were heard on the record. On the record. And uh, consequently Bjorn and Benny came and said, uh, listen, we can't go on uh, calling uh, ourselves Bjorn and Benny when, uh, when uh, the public uh, hear the girls. Because that, that it turned out that they became more and more important and, and they were heard more and more on the record. So I said, you, you don't come to me and say we should call it Bjorn, Ben, Yangnet and Frida because it will kill <laughs> foreigners, you know. So, well, they said, whatever you, whatever you come up with, we must, must change this situation. So I sat down and thought for, for a couple of days and uh, I took the initials, as you know. A, a, B, B, and A, A, and I, and that was ABBA, and this was also quite natural for me because uh, papers here in Scandinavia called me, very often of course at that time, and I became just fed up to say, every time to say, uh, now I'm, uh, I'm speaking about Bjorn, Benny, Agneta, and Frida, so uh, more as a joke I, I called them ABBA. Uh, it was a joke simply because uh, ABBA is a very well-known um, manufacturer here, oh, you see. know, of herrings. And of fish? Of fish. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it sounded a little bit ridiculous to start with. But um, then we had one of the biggest papers here in Sweden who um, asked the youngsters, uh, what would you like to call this group? And of course they already had heard about ABBA at that time, so I think 90% of them said ABBA. And the first time we really used it was in uh, Brighton, when we won the Eurovision Song Contest there, in 74 it was. Uh, but um, that was the very first time we used just, uh, just ABBA mm. uh, as the name. Okay. Now with, um, uh, back to 1974 in Brighton, Waterloo, um, it won the Eurovision Song Contest, and then you recorded it for, as a single then? After the, the con contest, you released it as a single? Uh, well, it was recorded before the contest. Yeah. And in fact, uh, we had the LP ready. And um, going back to that, these early days, um, we had a very big discussion if we should select Waterloo or another song of ours called uh, Asta Manana. And then, uh, the last day, uh, we had to make a decision, and I told Bjorn and Benny that, okay, um, you kill me, but I take Waterloo. 
And I think with these rights, in spite of, of course, um, Sila Samanyana, I think it's a good number as well. Well, that's just been recently, is it, of course? Back yes. At home. In fact, it has not been released as a single in any other territory than, than Australia. Mm. Uh, I think it was the flip side in Australia, which they just turned out. Um, so then we're, we're, we're Waterloo, of course, won the, the song contest. It then became a single. Um, it was a moderate hit in Australia at the end of 1974. Uh, mm. Then in 1975, um, you released uh, I Do, I Do, I Do, I Do. Yeah. Um, and then Mamma Mia became um, one of the most played tracks around Australia from the album. And c subsequently, it then was released as a single, and I Do, I Do, I Do, even though it had been released six months before that, uh, became the follow-up to Mamma Mia. Did you think back here that Mamma Mia was a potential single? <coughs> it was a potential single, yes, and you can see that because it's, uh, it's track one on, on side one on the mm. LP. But in fact, I must confess that um, we thought that uh, I Do, I Do and SOS uh, were bigger. Uh, potential singles. Uh, in, in fact, it was a, a friend of ours in Melbourne uh, who got the uh, film clip from us. Well, that was me. That was you. <laughs> and um, thank you. Uh, and um, I think we, when, when they asked permission from Australia to release Mamma Mia as a single, I was a little bit uh, reluctant to start with, uh, partly because I thought they released too many singles mm. in Australia. Uh, but then they came back and said we have a very good reaction and I said okay go on and we use um, we use this time we use Australia as a test market and of course I mean it became a very big hit as you know all over the world at, after that mm. so again thank you very much okay. Okay. Um, just going back to um, to the success of course you know the, the, the chart success in England uh, where they've, uh, they've had number ones there top ten in America uh, but a, a, a country like Australia, which is so, so far away from Sweden, um, did you ever really ever think, even the beginning of last year, that, um, that Adel would could be that successful in a country like Australia? I mean, no, of course not. I mean, it's, it's hard to say. And, and if I had come like a year ago, and if I had told people that uh, we will be uh, bigger in Australia than anybody else before, I mean, uh, they had sent me to the hospital, <laughs> I think. So, uh, in, in this, um, you know, in this business, anything can happen. And of course, we are very, very happy with the situation in, not only in Australia, but Australia as well. But we never dreamed of that success. I mean, how can you uh, be, so to say, sober and sit and say that, a year from now, we will be number one on the yeah. English LP charts right. at the same time as we are number one on the English single charts. Well, uh, on that subject, um, recording companies are, are supposed to know uh, and be able to predict and, and, and sign up artists. Is it true, we hear, it's like a, a Beatles story all over again, that uh, um, a couple of record companies actually knocked back uh, accepting ABBA um, on the Australian market, um, that you actually went to a couple of recording companies before you decided on RCA. Is that, is that a true story? <coughs> that is a true story, and uh, uh, not only for Australia, because uh, England is the same is the same thing. But of course, I mean that was before Waterloo. Yeah. And uh, it's always difficult to predict anything, mm. really. Uh, I don't blame anybody. I mean, uh, it has been a terrific. A uh, year or years, and uh, we do hope that we can continue. And in fact, to us, it's 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 a kind of a problem because having so many uh, buyers all over the world and friends, we of course we want to be better and better all the time, and uh, that means that it takes longer and longer and longer for us to to write, to produce, mm. and to come up with a result that we ourselves uh, think is the result. I mean, that means to us that we have to go into the studio maybe three times to, to record a song. And uh, uh, we don't trust anybody except ourselves. And uh, that's uh, a kind of um, funny situation that uh, it must, o when we hear something, when we des decide something about the release, about the song, a record, 
we must it must be so to say three two zero mm. you and Benny and me right. because if uh, any of us uh, has any objection uh, nothing will happen 